We begin on August 30th, 1988, in Layton, Utah, where two young brothers were spending a quiet afternoon at home with their mother. I picked Chase up, who was about eight months old, and decided that I'd give him his first Oreo cookie. And like every other eight-month-old child that eats his first Oreo cookie, it is everywhere. Chase, <laughs> he's making it. He proceeded to get it all over his face, hands, body, everything. Oh, look at this. So I picked him up and um, took him up to the bathtub where I could wash him off and clean him up. Okay, sit down. Let's get the water. And I set him in the bathtub, turned the water on, stopped the drain, and TJ, my nine-year-old son, yelled to me and said, Mom, you want it on the telephone. Lori and her husband often took business calls at home. Okay, can I go outside? I'm sure my thoughts were, I'll just hurry and get this phone call and get right back to the baby. That phone call I was waiting for, so when it came, it was like, oh, good, I've got to take care of this. And I just went right into the phone conversation. I got too heavily involved in a business conversation. It didn't even occur to me that Chase was in the bathtub. All the invoices, all the originals. As soon as I took the phone away from my ear, the horror hit me. Chase is still in the bathtub and the water is running. I ran down the hall to the bathroom and just that awful feeling of what you, you thought you were going to see, you saw. The water running full blast, the tub real full, and Chase floating face down at the top of it. But I saw it, and I saw his state and how he slumped over my arm as I was running to the neighbor's house. And he was kind of blue and bloated in that. I knew he was really bad. But you just didn't want to believe it with all your heart. You just did not want to believe it. At 5.28 p.m., the call came in to the Davis County Dispatch Center. Karen, can you grab the phone? We've got a possible drowning. The call was turned over to supervising dispatcher Karen Wright. Okay, do you know how to do CPR? No. How old is the child? Eight months old. Eight months old? Uh-huh. Okay, lay the child on a flat surface. Okay. I want you to tip the head up just slightly. Uh -huh. Now, I want you to give the baby four quick breaths. Cover his nose and his mouth with your mouth and give four quick breaths. Okay. Okay. Karen's mouth can go four quick breaths, baby. Okay. I knew we didn't have very much time. I didn't know how long the baby had been underwater, so we had to get air into him, get some oxygen, see if we could get a heart rate going. I knew that he was dead. If we didn't do something, he wasn't going to come back. Okay, did he do it? Uh-huh. Okay, I want you to fill down where the baby's chest, where the ribs go together. Uh-huh. Okay, right in the center there. I want you to use two fingers. Okay. Two fingers. Uh-huh. Push one half to one inch down to the chest, no further than one inch down. Okay. I was just real scared. I thought that he was going to be dead because I didn't know what happened. Just stay with me. The paramedics will be there in a minute, but you got to help me, okay? That precious little limp body, it, uh, it's about the worst feeling I've ever had. Paramedic Dave Flukiger and his partner headed to the scene. The part that got to us the most was when they came back before we had arrived and told us that uh, we were going on a baby that had drowned in the bathtub and that they were doing CPR. Right there, we knew it was a, a real, real serious call. I almost thought I'm going to hand the phone to Dave and let him do the CPR because I can't do this. I thought, no, I put him in this situation. I can't give that responsibility away. It's my responsibility. I have to take care of it. 
compression. He's coming back. He's coming back? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Now just don't compress anymore. Okay. Is he, is he moving around? Okay, that's okay as long as he's breathing. Do you, can you see that he's breathing? Yes. You did really good. Is he crying? No. Okay. Just, okay, wait a minute. Just calm down a little bit. You're doing fine. He's going to be okay. I started to fall apart again, and she said, Lori, you've got to calm down. I said, okay, you're right, I do. I have to calm down. What do you want me to do? Because I was willing to do anything. You're willing to bargain everything you have ever, ever had in your entire life. Just so that you know that your child's going to live. I knew that he still wasn't out of the woods, but I knew that what we had done had brought him around to a point where he was, he was alive. When I finally heard the paramedics arrive, I hung up the phone and I myself started to cry because I realized <laughs> we did good. We brought him back. Within five minutes, the Davis County rescue team arrived on the scene. Tell us what happened. <laughs> The feeling I got is she had seen her baby was dead. As far as she was concerned, that baby was gone, and now it was being given back to her. I can't even begin to, to imagine what that must feel like. Okay, was he before? No. Okay, Lori. He's dead. And all I kept saying was, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. This isn't an unusual call at all, I'm sure, that... You know, just about every paramedic uh, unit in the country has been on this type of a call. It's just a matter of a few seconds. You just, the phone rings, the baby's sitting up, and you say, I'm just going to grab the phone, and, and you think everything's okay, and you come back and point out it's not. It's hard for me to be judgmental and say anybody did anything wrong because it's, it's so simple to see how it could happen. It's been two and a half years since the accident, but Chase's complete recovery still amazes his father, Kelly. The only thing I really can comprehend is just how miraculous it is that my baby's not brain damaged or brain dead. Can you see the river down there? Can you hear it? It's very important that we realize that if we didn't have 911, we don't know what would happen to Chase. Had it not been for this person helping me, my child would not have made it. I still cannot do enough or, or say enough or communicate enough to her how appreciative I am, how much I love her. I'm glad I was there. I hope when this kid's 19, he can remember who I am. Because I'll always remember him. Chase is three now, and Laurie and Kelly have a third son who's the same age Chase was at the time of the accident. There you go. Kelly, don't you just a little bit? We can help other families out that may have left children in the tub before or left certain pesticides or chemicals or things in the way of children. If we can help them out and realize that these children are fragile, and that we really have to watch our step, otherwise we'll lose them. It'll be worth it. Over two years later, I still feel indescribable guilt. And I am more conscientious of things that could maybe hurt the children. I don't forget about the bathtub. I never forget about the bathtub. Maybe I shouldn't ever get completely get rid of the guilt. Maybe it's the maybe that's the thing that reminds me to keep a balance in my life. We all should take first aid and CPR courses every year. By learning basic life-saving techniques, we might be able to save the life of someone we love. 
This series is dedicated to all the men and women who answer our calls for help and are there when we need them most. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911.